These days, every job is a technology job. Whether you're a programmer, a marketer, or even just someone who sits down in front of a computer every day, you have a stake in the tapestry of the technology industry. Welcome to Wits and Wisdom, a podcast sharing insights, innovations, and inspiration from the award-winning Women in Tech Summit. Join host Gloria Bell, founder of the Women in Tech Summit, multi-hyphenate entrepreneur, and advocate for equity and equality in tech as she sits down with extraordinary guests from the WITS community. Listen in as they discuss wisdom from their career journeys, pro tips from their areas of expertise, and sneak previews of the biggest upcoming tech trends. This is WITS and Wisdom, a podcast from the Women in Tech Summit and Inspiring Tech Foundation. Hello, and welcome to Wits and Wisdom, a podcast sharing insights, innovations, and inspiration from the award-winning Women in Tech Summit. I'm your host, Gloria Bell, founder of Wits and the Inspiring Tech Foundation. We're recording live here at Wits Midwest. If the sound of those conference attendees out there is making you wish you were here with us, go to our website at womenintechsummit.com to see our upcoming conference, or even better, sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date. Today, I'm here with Brenda Darden-Wilkerson, President and CEO of AnitaB.org, and a board member at P33 Chicago, ShyTech, and the Algorithmic Justice League. Brenda, thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Gloria. Wow, the Justice League. I'm jealous. <laughs> I bet you get a lot of comic book jokes about that. But before we get into your mission as a champion of women in tech, I want to hear a little bit about your superhero origin story. I wanted to be a computer scientist and I wanted to do the arts. And so my degree allowed me to do both. Okay. So what exactly is your degree in? It's called computer studies. Tell us a little bit more for somebody who doesn't know what computer studies is. I studied all of the things that computer science uh, people did at the time. And that was things like COBOL and Fortran and Pascal. And so I had to take all of the engineering type classes, but then I also got to take Shakespeare and literature, which I grew up wanting to be an artist. Of course, my mother and father said no to that. I had to be a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. So I thought I would combine both of my passions in my degree. And I, I really think that it, it is the way to go. I would agree. We all need to be a little more well-rounded sometimes. You spoke this morning at Wits Midwest, and I was privileged enough to get to hear the story about how you discovered that passion for computers, but I'd love for our listeners to hear a little bit more about it. Yeah, thank you. It's a roundabout way of discovering what you end up loving to do in your life. And I always want to share it because I hope it encourages people because I was really discouraged in the way that I found technology. I was raised to be, as I shared, I had to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. I chose doctor. I used to do things like watch surgeries when I was a little kid. I was such a nerd. I am such a nerd, but that's okay, right? Oh, yeah. Being a nerd's great. <laughs> and so going to university, I had to prepare pre-med. And at my university, you just had to pick a major that included all of the prereqs, right? So I chose biomedical engineering. And growing up, I had to be a really excellent student because my parents were teachers. In fact, they were teachers at the high school I attended. I don't recommend that. It's a lot of pressure. But anyway, so I was a good student, but there was no computer science at my high school. And so when I was required to take two programming classes as a biomedical engineering major, that was my first exposure. At the same time, I'm learning about medicine and how it's practiced in the United States. I wasn't really all that excited about it. There's an amazing book called Invisible Women by Carolyn Criado Perez. I recommend it to everybody. It talks about how women were just missing in the data. And one of the things that I was finding is that medicines were not tested on women at all. So when they're ministered, there's all kind of bad things that happen. And that's just a short story to say that what I saw, I became a little disenchanted. And so it was like, now what do I do? So I tried a math major for a while. I tried various things, but I thought those programming classes, I like that. Maybe I'll try that. And so that was the beginning of my journey towards becoming someone who uh, could program and, and be in tech. It was 
discovering what you really liked and following that passion. Yes. Yes. It was a discovery, right? But it was a discovery that came from a disappointment. And that's why I want to encourage other people that you can end up with your life's work being something totally different than what you expected. And and it's wonderful. I think that's a really important message for a lot of people is sometimes that thing we're disappointed by actually can lead us to the thing that we're most excited by. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to say something about that thing called imposter syndrome. Well, I have to back up a little bit and tell you more about my work at CPS. So I created an, an initiative called Computer Science for All, which eventually became a graduation requirement that required all students to get computer science. Because it was not enough to introduce it into schools. There was always a reason to take it away. We don't have time for that. We don't have teacher for that. We don't have money for that, whatever the excuse is. So one thing that I learned then is you got to change the rules. So if we change the graduation requirement, then they had to do it. And now every student graduates with at least one computer science class. But in doing that work, it was actually discovered by the Obama administration which allowed me to go and work with his very talented and passionate group of people to create those types of opportunities across the country. And at the time, Megan Smith was his CTO. And when this opportunity came along to be opened up for CEO and president of anitab.org, she was very active with the organization. And she actually threw my hat in the ring. And that's how I even learned about it. I didn't even know about the organization because I never forget when I got the email from the recruiter, I immediately started to say why I couldn't do it. Even after spending time encouraging so many other people, telling them what they could do, you can do it, you can be anything that you want. And ultimately, I took the role because I heard one of my students in my ear, make believe, saying, Mrs. Wilkerson, you told me that if I got these skills, there'd be opportunity for me. And I knew that that wasn't necessarily going to be true for her because I'd been there. So that was why I left CPS to join this organization, because I wanted to make sure that all of those amazing students that we had allowed, pushed into, encouraged into the pipeline actually had opportunity once they got there. And the work that you are doing actually is making that impact. I can hear it in your voice, and I'm lucky enough to be sitting across the table from you, so I actually get to see it. Tell our listeners how it makes you feel getting to know that you're making that impact. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I think one of the reasons I wanted to be a doctor, this is just quaint, everybody says this, is I really wanted to help people. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make sick people well. I wanted to give people answers to challenges that they had. In many ways, I'm getting to do that dissatisfaction with a life's direction because you didn't get to do what you should have been doing anyway. We get to fix that. I like to talk about pathways versus pipeline. The pipeline sounds really sequential and maybe you and I went through the pipeline pathway, but there are so many people who have other life experiences who really should bring those life experiences into tech. And so getting to create those pathways in for people of all ages, backgrounds, and all the different demographics is life-changing for me. AnitaB.org's mission statement is to create a just tech ecosystem, Yes, which is probably the most succinct and yet powerful mission statements out there. I want to know if you could say there is a single blind spot in the tech ecosystem right now. What would you say it is? The ability to recognize where talent can come from. The book Protopia, they talk about how there was a concerted effort to define the people who do computer science, the optimum person in a certain way. And it just happened to be more likely to be a man than a woman. Antisocial, doesn't talk, nerdy. I'm an introvert, but obviously if you get me talking, I don't mind talking. So I don't count in that particular estimation. Assuming that you can look at someone and decide whether or not they should be or could be part of your culture, that's a blind spot. Completely agree. I'm going to flip that. And if there is an area in the tech ecosystem that gives you the most hope, what would it be? Generally, you have two sides to a coin, right? The scariest gives me the most hope. And what gives me hope about it are the people who are working to keep it honest. And that's AI. When AI can help solve medical problems, when AI can 
more rapidly and with fewer errors create a particular process that serves people. That's a good thing. What gives me hope are the pioneers that are on the front line who are working around the ethics of AI and bringing attention to the blind spots that are built into AI, right? Because it's it's based upon historical data that's rife with discrimination and racism and redlining. And even like when Apple Pay was created and Steve Wozniak and his wife applied for each their own credit card and his wife ended up with half the credit, right? And he's like, we have all things in common. How does she get less credit? It shows that that data that they were using was data that was problematic. So those people who are on the front line shouting that and talking about ways to change that and people who are talking to our legislators and helping them understand what role they can play, I'm hopeful there. I think it's a good place to be hopeful. There's so much emerging technology that can do so much good in the world. Yes. And as long as we're paying attention to where it goes. Exactly. Some very good places to be hopeful. Speaking of being hopeful, I want to talk a little bit about your flagship event, the Grace Hopper Celebration. You had almost 30,000 attendees last year, your first year back in person post-COVID. So I want to talk about what do you see as the goal of the Grace Hopper Celebration? It's what we just talked about. It's hope. People who are hopeful do great things. They do things that people say can't be done. I was hopeful that we could get computer science in front of everybody when everyone else said it was impossible. The hope sustained me through all the craziness. If we can bring women together and show them that just who they are and what they know and on their path and their background can have an impact on their lives and on others, they're going to go do it because they're going to leave hopeful. And I think that if I could say how people describe coming away from the conference, it's all around that. They come away knowing who they are and what they can do. That is a very good place to be. So we could do an entire episode talking about all the work that anytobe.org does. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to throw a plug in right now and tell everybody to go to anitab.org, look through the website, look at all the amazing programs, sign up, and really get to know the work that you do because the work really is important and it's really impactful. So I want to talk a little bit about kind of what's next. Like I know you have a lot of things coming up, plans for the organization. You can tell us a little bit about that. I also want you to tell us what you see coming up next for you. Okay, interesting. I can talk to you all day long about the organization. And another thing that I recommend, and I, and I know you as a leader, uh, this amazing organization I got to speak at today, the conference, you share this with women all the time, that we should brag, that we should talk more about what we do. And I think one of the things that you get from that is a better understanding of who you are and what you want. And so recently when someone asked me that question, I actually didn't know. I've done what my hand found. I've done what there was to do. And, you know, what I notice about the younger generation of women that are coming up now, they're more self-aware. I'm so proud, right? They're more self-aware. And so that they can shape their lives. They're going to serve because that's what we do. But to shape their lives in a way that they don't leave themselves out makes me proud. And they're actually my role models. So I've got some learning to do there. But for the organization, we really are focusing on building into women at every stage of their journey, the concept of leadership in a way that I'm hoping will infuse amazing opportunities into their lives and a different culture in every place that they go from university to the places that they work, hopefully when they get into the C-suite. I think historically, we were there to help, not there to lead. If we start infusing into women from the beginning, we need you to lead. Lead in your space, whatever space that you're in, but we want you ultimately in that leadership because when leadership changes, then the culture will change, different problems will get solved, and things will be better. I believe that. And so all of the programs that we're working on from our membership program to our apprenticeship program, which is Earn As You Learn, to the partner programs that we work with our corporations, all have that in mind. Big goals. Big goal. Moonshot. (laughs) Always should be going for the moonshot. That's right. And I encourage everyone who's listening, 
be a part of helping achieve those big goals. We need you. We need you. And and you're what's missing. That's what I always like to say when people feel like, what should I do? First of all, realize you're what's missing. Don't go in and conform. You know, back, it's funny, I like to say back in my day when we first went <laughs> into tech, you know, they wanted to make little men out of us. We had to wear the suits with the padded shoulders, the little tie. They weren't looking for us to authentically be and bring what we authentically have. That's what's necessary. That's what's missing. Be you, bring you. In the work with the need to be and with the Grace Hopper celebration, a lot of your work creates very tangible benefits. It also creates some very intangible benefits. Where do you see the intersection between those two? I always think the intangible is the most powerful because it many times is the most lasting, right? When people leave with a different idea, than what they've been encumbered with. For instance, I actually learned about the Grace Hopper celebration from a couple male teachers. They came to me, they said, can you fund our way to this event? And I was like, well, tell me about the event. So they start talking about it and this glowing, this, oh my gosh, it's this, it's that. And I was like, why do you want to go to that? Why is that interesting to you? But what they had found there was a different way of thinking about their students. And so then they came back to their classroom and they created a classroom that was now welcoming to all, not just to the traditional male students. So I feel like that's what we want to do. That's the most important thing that's intangible. When you come back confident, I know a better way now to do things. I can approach my work in a different way. I can approach my life. I can approach my relationships. They came back and they were more likely to collaborate with female teachers, whereas it had been very separated. So to me, that's intangible. It's a different way of seeing life. different. And then as teachers and educators, you impact thousands upon thousands of lives, right? Not just your students, but everybody your students touches. That is, to me, the wonder of what we do at the conference. That's amazing. And you can't create those results any other yeah. way. Yeah. Brendan, this has been such a great conversation. How can our listeners get in touch with you, learn more about your organization? Our website is anitab.org, like Anita Borg with a period in the middle. After one of our co-founders, please come to our site and you can go to GHC dot anita b.org to learn about our conference and we're really excited to to have everybody come and and visit us on the website you know give us feedback because we're here to serve we're here to make the ecosystem better for those who are in it and to make it easier for those who aren't to get in it and so we need that feedback so we want to hear from everyone wonderful and i know you have the grace hopper celebration coming up in yes. september yes. so you can give everyone the details on that Yes, it's this year. It is in Orlando, Florida, and it is September 26th through the 29th. And we'd like to see everybody there. And this year we're going to run it hybrid again. So if you can't come in person, you can sign up and get all the great experiences online as well. Awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It has been such a wonderful opportunity to chat with you and to have you here as a speaker at Wits Midwest. And I can't wait to see what we get to do working together moving forward. The pleasure is all mine. I can't wait. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us on another episode of Wits and Wisdom. And we will see you on our next episode. Ready to learn more about the Women in Tech Summit? Visit our website at womenintechsummit.net. That's womenintechsummit.net to view our most up-to-date event schedules, calls for speakers, and sponsorship opportunities. If you enjoyed this episode, bookmark the show, give us a follow, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps us educate, inspire, and connect with even more movers and shakers within and beyond the technology industry. Thanks for listening and see you here again soon on Wits and Wisdom, a podcast from the Women in Tech Summit and the Inspiring Tech Foundation.